I wanted to use my time with you this afternoon uh, just to talk briefly, to give you an overview of the Catalyst programmes and the grants awarded, um, to give you a sense of how people have used the funding, um, share with you some early findings from the past awarding evaluation which we um, commissioned last summer and share some resources and tools which I hope that you'll find helpful. Launched in September 2011, Catalyst is a culture sector wide programme jointly sponsored by Department for Media, Culture and Sport, Arts Council England and HLF. The programme is formed of three strands, Catalyst Endowments, Capacity Building Umbrella Grants and Capacity Building Small Grants. Between May 2012 and December 2013, we awarded 166 grants across all three strands, totalling £40.6 million. The scheme aims to help organisations to become more financially sustainable over the longer term and to support them to diversify their income, engage private giving, sorry, encourage a private giving, and to build the skills and capacity to attract and sustain relationships with new donors. Before I move on to talk to you about the three different schemes, I just wanted to touch briefly on our strategic framework, 2013 to 18, a lasting difference for heritage and people, which underpins all of our work. We want applicants to focus on the outcomes of their projects, and by which we mean the difference that we made with lottery money. Therefore, we've created a menu of 14 outcomes that we want um, applicants to talk about how they can meet. I'm not going to go through all 14 because that would be dull and just me reading a long list. But the outcomes we expect the Catalyst programmes to meet have been bolded and underlined on these slides. And they are, the heritage will be better managed, that people will have developed skills for the capacity building strands only, and for all three strands that organisations will be more resilient. The first of the Catalyst grant strands that I wanted to talk about, therefore, is endowments. Uh, the match funding scheme is designed to support the development of an endowment and encourage new long-term relationships between heritage organisations and their donors. In total, 31 awards of between 500,000 and 5 million pounds were made across two batches, one in June 2012 and one in June 2013. And these have the potential to draw down 36 million pounds of HLF investment. The grant matches every pound raised on a sliding scale depending on the size of the grant awarded. So for example, a grant of 500,000 carries a one to one match, whereas 5 million carries a three to one match. Assuming all targets are met by the end of the programme, there's a potential for the fund raised and the HLF investment to create £90 million for the sector. Moving on to some successes and challenges. Grantees are still fundraising to meet their targets, with the first batch to com due to complete their campaigns in June 2016 and the second in June 2017. Through our ongoing eva evaluation being undertaken by the University of Kent, we know grantees are experiencing challenges around staff capacity and balancing the need to fundraise to cover the core costs whilst managing an endowment campaign. Staff turnover has also been mentioned by several as an issue, with developing strong, in, particularly in terms of developing strong relationships with donors. There have been some successes reported as well, though, particularly around grounding campaigns legacy fundraising and galvanising support from trustees. In some cases, grantees have secured a double match, um, which means they've secured a, a large donation from a major donor and then use this to supplement smaller donations. So a £10 gift would then be, would be matched by the large don major donor um, and then double matched by HLF again, creating £40 for the organisation. When we designed the endowment programme, we knew that not all organisations would either be in a position to or want to build an endowment. So the Catalyst Capacity Building initiatives were developed in order that a broader range of organisations could benefit from the Catalyst offer. During September and October 2012, research was undertaken into the capacity building needs of heritage organisations through surveys and focus groups. The research found that by far and away the biggest fundraising challenge facing participants was low capacity. Be unsurprising. Often due to sudden cuts to statutory funding, staff, trustee and volunteer capacity was much reduced. Gaps in skills were also noted and on occasion a lack of willingness to take part in fundraising activity. 
There was also a plea to HLF to explore more innovative methods of funding and avoid the same old training courses. Through the two capacity women schemes, Catalyst Umbrellas and Catalyst Small Grants, we want to support organisations to make a real step change in their fundraising behaviour. We are also aware though that change takes time and that the capacity building activity undertaken within the grants is going to take some time to yield results. Looking at Catalyst Umbrellas, in December 2013, we awarded nine umbrella bodies a Catalyst Umbrella Grant of between £100,000 and £500,000. Our investment there totals £3.4 million. The projects are currently working with experienced trainers to deliver over 15,000 learning opportunities to a range of capacity building services, training and networking opportunities. And hopefully this will enable organisations to increase the funding they receive from private sources. Now, I'm very sorry for the rather unattractive table but you do have a copy on your chairs as I thought it would be useful just to give you a list of all the umbrella organisations who are currently running a Catalyst Umbrella project. And to give you an example of the sort of work being undertaken, the Heritage Alliance in partnership with the Institute of Fundraising is running their two-year UK-wide programme Giving to Heritage. The training is for any member of staff, volunteer, committee member or trustee from a heritage group or community group with a responsibility to develop and deliver fundraising activities. The programme includes 99 face-to-face -face workshops, mentoring, telephone surgeries and webinars. I'm going to move on to Catalyst Small Grants. <coughs> we awarded over two batches in June and October 2013, 1.13 million across 125 grants of between three and ten thousand pounds. And this supports a range of activity to help build capacity, integrate fundraising within organisations and improve access to new <coughs> funding sources. We received applications to undertake all kinds of activities, such as developing a fundraising strategy, training staff and volunteers, developing the skills to approach local businesses and improving networks. Some applied to commission external advice and support, while others wanted to provide short-term support for existing staff so that they could really look at their fundraising approach. Others wanted to improve their websites or how their data was stored, so really a wide range of activity. I'm going to use my next few slides just to give you two more in-depth examples. The first is Houghton Tower Preservation Trust, who received £9,500 for their project, Securing Heritage and Expanding Horizons, a fundraising strategy for the future. They applied to appoint a fundraising consultant to review their fundraising needs and to identify gaps in existing activities and resources, to work with trustees and key staff to develop a fundraising strategy and a framework for the trust, and to enable training and mentoring for staff, volunteers and trustees. They also applied and paid for a few subscriptions to trustfunding.org and companygiving.org. So, what happened as a result of the funding? The Trust really wanted to focus on developing the area of the Tower's heritage which were underdeveloped in order to broaden existing audiences and the heritage related activities available. The development of the fundraising strategy laid solid foundations by equipping the organisation to raise the funds needed to carry out this future work developing the site. The Trust reported that the strategy has also provided unexpected but valuable outcomes for the local community and economy. It identified new roles for volunteers, for example, to develop and deliver fundraising events. Recruitment for these new volunteers is going to take place later this year. The work that the organisation plans to undertake will also require the um, creation of three new salaried posts. And finally, the Trust hope that with this enhanced offer at the Tower, which will be a result of the strategy being delivered, that this will serve to boost the local economy. Moving on to my second example, which is Wildlife and Countryside Link, who received £9,600 for their project, shaping Wildlife and Countryside Link's future to maximise effectiveness and ensure long-term viability. They applied to commission a management consultant in order to help them deliver, develop a fundraising strategy, to look at improving their membership model and to start a wider programme of organisational change involving engaging all stakeholders, including both staff and members. Link involved all staff and trustees in the development of their strategy so that really there was uh, everyone felt they had a say and an ownership over developing the organisation. 
as part of the process linked to an analysis of the border environment that they and their members are were operating and in and are likely to. This may be familiar to some of you, but I just wanted to share the tool that they used, um, which was a STEM pool. This requires them to focus and, and analyse eight key factors, which are on the screen here: economical, social, technological, environmental, media, political, legal, and ethical. Just to give you a brief idea of how this worked, when considering economical factors, Link thought about reductions in their members' budgets and their lack of capacity and ability to spend on membership fees, which in turn led them to the conclusion that they really did need to diversify their income base away from the membership model and also to focus on demonstrating great, greater value for money for their members. They went on to use this as STEM core analysis, along with looking at their strengths, weaknesses, opportunities and threats, to underpin the development of their strategy to give them a really clear understanding of what they needed to do and why. Finally, a very important point which was raised by Link in their reporting back to us at HDEV was that the strategy mustn't just be a tick box exercise and the team feel really strongly that they'll need to keep returning to this in order to deliver their plan. As I mentioned, we um, commissioned our capacity building evaluation um, in, over the summer last year and I just wanted to share a few early findings with you. The report isn't published on our website yet but it will be in the fairly near future. Umbrella projects are reporting good levels of demand for training but the size of an organisation and capacity to attend is sometimes proven a barrier. This is something that projects are going to reflect on as they move into their second year of delivery. A survey of grantees and a control group was undertaken and received very, very positive feedback. Given the focus, focus of Catalyst, it's probably not too surprising, but it did show that 92% of organisations that didn't have a fundraising plan before their Catalyst small grant now do. 83% of respondents feel that staff have developed skills in fundraising in particular, and 60% feel their organisation is now more resilient, providing evidence that HNF outcomes are starting to be met. Lastly, 55% said they thought their organisation is better managed following their grant. Some examples of this, include, of this improved management included increased capacity in terms of both staff and governance, some reporting more diverse income streams, better systems and resources. Respondents also highlighted being able to address capacity and capability gaps due to this improved management. See, this is the first report of um, three. So it's not really possible to assess the long-term impact of Catalyst as many of our grantees are still either finishing their project or have only just. But I really like this <coughs> quote from one of our end of grant reports, which is, as this grantee put it, delivering the HLF Catalyst grant project has made us more focused on our problems and their solutions. It's built morale and given us a great sense of purpose. It has helped us to prioritise our agenda for the forthcoming years. Obviously, as Catalyst is now closed, I thought it would just be helpful to use my last couple of slides just to tell you about our funding programmes where it might be possible to include some capacity building activity. If you were thinking about applying to HLF, why not think about including some capacity building activity in, in a grant application for perhaps sharing heritage, grants of up to £10,000, or our heritage grants, which are grants between ten and £100,000. We also have our Heritage Grants program, but as these are much larger grants, I'd probably say think more on the lines of business planning activity or thinking about how to mitigate risk around future sustainability. If anyone is interested in adding an element of capacity building into a potential project application to HLF, I'd really suggest going back to our outcomes and looking through them and thinking about how the work you need to do might meet them. Outside of our grants, there's also the Business Survival Toolkit, which is on our website, which um, offers really hands-on business planning tools, and you don't need to apply to access to it. Lastly, I just wanted to flag our Catalyst Online community, which, despite the name, is open to anyone involved in or interested in fundraising, not just Catalyst grantees. We launched it last November, and want to make it a really useful place for everyone if we can with lots of resources and discussion about fundraising so if you get a chance please do take a look thank you very much thank you.